Hello and welcome to my morning note. Last week was quite a remarkable response to the, uh, the words of Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the Federal Reserve. And so far this week it appears that markets are still trying to understand how the picture has changed. Now for the long term, the uh, point that my guest today wants to make in this latest research, the uh, Barclays Global Outlook, is that we can no longer talk about a rising tide lifting all boats. He's the head of research for Barclays, Larry Cantor. Larry, thanks very much for joining me once again. My pleasure. Let's start by taking a look at, at a very interesting presentation of uh, US households' net worth as a percentage of disposable income, which certainly does make it look as though we might be getting to the point where there is a, an asset bubble that needs to be pricked. H how do you compile this chart? Right. So this comes from the Federal Reserve's flow of funds data, mm. and it just takes all of wealth, which is housing wealth plus financial market wealth. Right. So ba basically the value of bonds and stocks. And what it shows is we were, you know, if you remember the last two economic cycles were largely an asset price boom and bust in 99 and then again in, uh, in uh, the most recent one in 2008. Right. And you could see that wealth was going along the same road. And, and you notice that way going back all the way to 1952, we've never seen those kinds of asset swings. Since QE works through raise, rising asset prices, I think part of the reason the Fed is doing this is they've kind of achieved their goal. Now let's take a look at uh, a measure of unemployment, which is obviously also very important to the yes. Fed trying to, to get back to a sensible unemployment goal. Yeah. Many people make the point uh, that it doesn't feel like employment has improved very right. much uh, at street level in the States. This chart suggests that maybe they, are, they could be ready to, to take their foot off the gas. Take me, take me through this. Yeah, so this is the two-year change in the unemployment rate. And you can see in most recoveries, the fastest pace in the unemployment rate we get to is basically a percentage point a year, which is two percentage points mm. over two years. And that's where we are now. It's very rare to see the unemployment. Now, obviously, job growth hasn't been as strong because the participation rate is lower, but the drop in the unemployment rate's been impressive. So as recoveries go, this isn't actually as bad as it might appear. There might be a stronger case for tapering off QE sooner rather than later than people think. Correct, both because of asset prices and the unemployment rate. Now, what on earth, therefore, are we going to do about allocating assets? The last time, as we're recording this, um, uh, the yield on the 10-year Treasury has been at around about 2.6%. Don't know yep. whether that's going to date it in future. Right. Uh, similarly, if we could take a look at a chart comparing um, emerging and developed market equities, um, very st the, the sell-off in emerging equities is getting really quite startling at this point. Where right. does one find value at this point? W where would it be sensible to allocate assets for the future? Well, I think it's going to get tougher from here. That's message number one. Mm. We have had a rising tide lifting all boats. Stocks have done particularly well over the last year, and bonds really didn't sell off very much. Right. And part of that was because the Fed was just pumping liquidity in. We've been able to achieve very good equity returns mm. on very mediocre growth. We believe now the bar is higher. You're going to need stronger growth to drive equity significantly higher from here. And moreover, if you do get that stronger growth and equities do go up, bonds will pay the price and sell off. Now, just in right. immediate reaction to the Fed, we're getting sell offs in both. But we think that wiggles in growth are going to play a much bigger role now in driving so, markets. So markets as well as the Fed are going to be painfully data dependent. Exactly right. Now, in the very near term, we actually think the US economy is not ready to accelerate yet. And so we may see equities sell off a little more and the bond market settle down. But beyond the next few months, the U.S. economy ought to do a lot better, especially with all that fiscal tightening coming off. Now, but are there any buying opportunities? I mean, obviously, there was some froth in the emerging markets. Yes. That's why we've seen the sell-off that we've had. That's right. Has this now created a buying opportunity? Mexico has had a bear market just in two months, for example. I mean, right. are there any opportunities to buy out there? Yes. I mean, I think one of the things that's going on with emerging markets is a lot of investors through this period of Fed easing and QE mm. have put on carry trades mm. and a lot of borrowing in low funding currencies like the dollar and buying emerging markets assets. Right. And they're reversing that because they're nervous the Fed is going to tighten sooner rather than later. And that's created some excessive drops. You mentioned Mexico. They've done a lot of structural reform. The economy's in pretty good shape. So we think that that's gone a little overboard. Same with Korea, which absor has absorbed the yen, weakening pretty well, and doesn't really get hit by the commodity prices right. from China because they're an industrial producer. And with the U.S. going to be doing better in the economy, Korea should benefit. 
Okay, Larry, thank you very much indeed. I don't think we necessarily gave you any great certainty there, but I hope there are at least a few ideas. It's not going to be quite as simple a job investing in the next few years as it has been for the last few.